Hey everybody, I'm back. Sorry, I took about a, a week or so off and uh, the wife and I went up to Oregon and California and hung out in the, the beach and got some sun, some sand, and then we went up in the mountains and uh, stayed at a little cabin up there. Um, but now I'm back in Minnesota, um, back working on this thing. The last time you saw me, I think I was trying to get the doors fit and get the gaps right, and then I welded a little, uh, little square, rect square uh, tubing on the doors to hold the doors in place get them all lined up get that gap all ready to go and then i was going to put this on the back burner and work on the bed but had a little bit of time to think about it and i think i'm going to work on the cab kind of keep going with that i'm going to probably end up putting some uh bracing inside the cab instead of being on the outside which i kind of had a little brain fart i don't know why i did that but i'm probably end up gonna take some square tubing and go across from the cowl to the back of the, the door jam, put a couple of braces across there on the inside. That way I can open the door. Would be kind of a, a smart idea, huh? Do that on both sides. And then um, this guy that I took out, that little pain in the butt, probably put that back in actually. Uh, like I said, the back rocker panels aren't welded to the back door jam anymore. So I'm gonna tack weld those back in, get them in place on both sides and then take that ugly thing and instead of having a straight across bar on the back i'm probably going to come up about three four inches and then go across and go down so have like a little little loop on the back that way it'll slide over the frame and then what i was going to do is mount some like uh, little standoffs to hold that onto the frame build like I don't know, little frame mounts or something to hold it in. so that way that is mounted to the frame i um, mean there's that frame mount right there for the body so I don't know if I'd do another one or if I'd go off of that. I'm trying to still figure that out, but that's the other uh, frame mount for the floor pan. So that's pretty much all that the cab would be mounted to would be that place and that place on both sides. Uh, there is no front mount on the on the Explorer chassis, kind of like on the F51. The F51 had like a little mount up here somewhere, but this one doesn't have that. So those two and then if i do the extended cab i'll probably build another mount back here for the cab off of that so you have at least six points of contact holding the cab to the explorer chassis and another thing i thought about i was sitting there thinking about how am i going to get this fuse box and the wiring harness mounted in this cab and as you remember i saved this little hole this is that rectangular hole that this these uh wire the wiring harness goes through into the cab so I have a little bit of space here on the firewall that I was thinking, hey, this thing would be perfect. I can just cut this out right here and then run the wiring through the engine bay and into the cab that way. So the, I mean, there's a little bit of a gap in here. I mean, I think I think it would fit right there so I can get the wiring harness into the, into the cab, which would be awesome. And then what I was gonna do is box that in and attach it to the cab of the 50, uh, 49, 51, whatever. The F1 cab, let's put it that way. And then this, I was gonna take and build another little box tray up here, a little bit lower, like it would be underneath the cowl, the, but it'd sit above the manifold a little bit and kinda a little bit above the brake booster. I've seen a guy that does that with the uh, the 46, uh, well, the early 40 Fords, where he puts that fuse box up here where the windshield wiper motor used to be. And I might end up building like a sheet metal box to mount this in. So it has this nice little thing that just tucks in there. Just as long as I can open this lid and get to the access to the fuse, that's all that matters to me. Might cut this back a little bit, get rid of all that mounting crap. So I only need like the two tabs that hold it to the box. Figure something out. But yeah, I mean, that's a good place for it. It's up and out of the way. Uh, and the wiring harness is so short where I can't go much with this, but that would be a perfect place right here in that corner of the, the cowl to run that through into the body. So that's kind of what I want to get done this week, probably, I won't get it done this week, but I'm gonna try. And then I'm gonna try to include, and like encapsulate or enclose the top of this cow. And again, what I'm gonna probably try to do is I'm gonna cut this, most of this out, because I wanna try to get the middle of this. I don't know if it's gonna interfere with where the brain box is, but this middle part, I'm gonna try to get as much out so the factory 51 F1 fresh air vent would actually function. So I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this out. And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, that's a lot of the structure, that's a lot of the support that holds that cowl together. Well, if I do that, 
I'm probably gonna try to run cross bracing across because obviously the pedals are here, so there's a lot of weight, and the steering wheel, steering column's gonna be here, so there's a lot of weight. Pushing this and pulling this down. So I'm gonna do like some cross bracing from what I don't cut out, which is probably this mount to the front of the firewall. So give it a little bit more rigidity and support that way. And uh, do that on both sides, kind of build up a little bit of stiffness. And I'm not sure if I need to build one off the front to the frame or if I need to build some kind of struts of supports to hold this thing. I'm thinking once I get the, fifth, the, the F1 cab onto the Explorer and welded and mounted to this firewall of the Explorer, it should have enough rigidity where things aren't bouncing around because obviously this is kind of loose. There's not a lot of support holding that in place. But once it gets mounted to the cab, it'll be good. And uh, I'm thinking about seeing if I can get like a piece of sheet metal and go straight, make this straight. Because you see there's a little there's a little arc to it, a little bit. But if I can get this straight, or at least where the, the front of the F1 cab sits, get that straight. So it'll be just like this. Do a little straight piece. That way when I go throw the cab back on, it lines right up with that straight piece of sheet metal. That's kind of what I've been thinking about as well. So today the main thing is getting back to the cab, putting support bars across the doors, getting that going, get the cab nice and square and supported and uh, ready to go to get put back on the Explorer chassis. Locate where that firewall is gonna be on the F1. Figure out where I can get that. What needs to be cut out of here to get the fresh air intake to work as much as I can and see what I need to do to build the box, sheet metal box to put the uh, fuse box up here along this edge and to figure out how to get the um, wiring harness mounted in this little rectangular hole to get into the firewall, into the into the compartment. So that's kind of my goal this week. I don't know how much I'll get done today. I don't know how much I'll get done tomorrow, but that is what I want to do. I want to get it where the cab is ready to go and welded on and set in place onto the Explorer chassis by the end of the week. That's what I'd like to do. And that's going to take a little bit of work, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how far I get. So uh, on Saturday night, I didn't get too far. I didn't uh, get the support bars welded in across the door jam. So what I did do is uh, you can see that uh, rectangular tubing. Uh, I cut out the big crossbar that was flat, ran flush with the, the top of the rocker panels like right here and uh, cut that out and then added like a, a five inch lift, uh, like just a little bit there and then lifted up that cross member. So that's higher up so it can fit down. So the cab can fit down farther into this opening, dropping the cab, the whole cab down on the chassis, which is cool. So uh, the reason I stopped is I ran out of welding wire. So I gotta get some of that tomorrow, but I uh, got that in there. Obviously there's a little gap. It's kind of hard to see, but there's there's gaps. So I'm gonna have to do some like filler panels to get that to fill in. And with that raised like that, what I'm thinking is this is gonna be a nice place once I get the extended cab to put the battery. Like, make a little battery tray box back here somewhere and then like a little storage box for like a jack and stuff like that. So you'll never even know that it's up that high. It's just still gonna be like a little, little storage ledge. And uh, another thing I did is I got a little bit crazy idea that this obviously this whole firewall thing is square. I'm like, hey, if it's square, why don't I just build a frame that I can drop over this, this cowl and figure out where it's gonna be and uh, cut accordingly. And uh, so I built this little, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a one inch tube under here and then like three quarter inch tube here. And what I'm gonna do is this is gonna help make this cab a little bit more rigid is tie that little corner, uh, this tube into that tube like this, like triangulate it to a point. So we have built in structural support for the firewall into the floor pan and back. So that will help keep this firewall from getting too flexible because I'm gonna weld a sheet metal cowl onto that and into there so that it'll all be 
hopefully one solid chunk because that's kind of what I was thinking. And yeah, that's kind of where I was going to put the wiring harness through. So I looked at this firewall in this Explorer and this seam is flush all the way down the firewall. So I'm going to cut this part of the firewall out and put a nice piece of sheet metal that's nice and flush and then straight across and like cap off whatever I need to. So all this craziness up in here will go away and I'll just have one straight sheet metal piece up and then a top cap. I probably will stop it right before it gets to where the, this, the CPU is and uh, go around that because I don't really want to mess with moving that. Just leave that where it's at. But yeah, getting rid of all this, getting rid of all that and then straight up. And I'm going to keep this part obviously because these bolts are for the pedals. And then there's the two bolts here for the mounting this fiberglass thing. And there's that one bolt there. But I'm going to probably try to cut as much out of this as I can to get the fresh air intake to work. And then put some little, you know, those three inch square tubing braces to that new bulkhead, um, firewall bulkhead thing. Just put some bracing across it to give it a little bit more uh, rigidity and uh, hopefully tie all that in together into this awesome new little square frame this is just a mock-up this is definitely not going to be the one i can put in because welding again not the best but just something to mock up to give me an idea what to do this little idea that was running through my head like hey this would be a good idea to build some more strength into this cab so that's what i'm doing doing that so tomorrow i'm going to pick up some welding wire finish tack welding in that bottom frame and then cut the square tubes that go across the door openings so i can hopefully get rid of this ugliness, cut those off and still have the doors open and close. The doors don't like move on me. None of the adjustments moved. And what they say is when you do that, like you cut those things off, you don't want to hear a ping, like things like pulled apart. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. See you guys tomorrow. And I'm back. Uh, unfortunately, Sunday, I got kind of busy doing some family me stuff. So I wasn't able to work on this Sunday, but I was able to work it tonight, uh, Monday night. And uh, this is what I did. I got the cab back on, I got the, the bed back on, and as you can see, I tried to line the fender up and that wheel just a little bit too far back in the wheel well. So uh, the reason I did that, I'll give you a little quick rundown of what I did. So I did put the support bars in across the doors and then I tied it together with another crossbar and I redid that little crazy U-shaped uh, rectangular steel bar that I did redid that a little bit so it gives it more rigidity and did all that and then i went to the explorer chassis and this firewall if you remember it was kind of like a a two-piece it would come up and it would y off and have like a little front that went off into the engine bay and then a little part that went off into the passenger compartment and it had little mounts for the the pedals and stuff like that so that i said before that front part I could trim off and has a nice flush line inside the firewall of the Ford Explorer to mount like a straight flat panel cowl to the F1. So I lined the F1 up with that nice front, uh, that nice straight edge. And that's why we have the wheel so far back in the wheel well, because the cab is pushed too far forward now. So what I'm gonna have to do is move the cab back, I don't know, about four or five inches and then instead of having a straight panel, it's gonna to have to come up and have a little ledge or a little angle or something to that. So it hooks up to the, the F1 cowl. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. So that's what I'm gonna to to end up doing is pushing the cab back to get this wheel. Uh, another thing I gotta remember is the wheel well, or wheel base, sorry. Wheel base on the Ford Explorer is only 111.6 inches from front center to center on the wheels versus the F1 which is exactly 114 inches. So I have two extra inches on the Ford F1 that I got to kind of make up with the wheel well. So this wheel might not be exactly centered. It might be, you know, back a little bit, kind of giving myself a little bit more room to work with. And uh, again, that's going to, I mean, the back, the bed area is going to like be dependent on where this fender goes because the fender goes running board back fender and the back fender mounts the bed so that's gonna dictate that but for today that's kind of what i wanted to do is i wanted to cut that explore panel off and get this nice flush uh surface to mount to so i'm going to clean off that edge 
clean it all off. It's like got some rough. I basically what I did is I took a, a hammer and chisel and chiseled off all the spot welds that were here that held this that front panel on. And this is hit right here. Kind of give you an idea what I did here. It's kind of tore it apart pretty good. But as you can see, I just chiseled off all the spot welds with a, I just went through with a, a nice chisel and hammer and chiseled this down. Didn't really affect the front edge of this, except for right here. I kind of mangled it pretty good right there when I first started. But other than that, the, the ledge is pretty clean. So I'm just gonna clean it off, grind it off, give myself a nice little surface to weld a sheet metal panel to. Jeez, down here. But yeah, that's pretty good. And I didn't want to cut the door connectors off until I had the cab pretty much set where I wanted it. And then, then I'll cut those little things off because I really don't need to be in the cab right now. I'm just gonna try to get this firewall, get this cowl thing figured out, which would be nice because once I get that front panel on, a little, it's gonna be a little L shelf here, unfortunately, because this is gonna go back. So it's gonna go back probably about this far. So we're gonna have a nice size L shaped cowl here. That'll be good because that will give me more room to run the, the, the plugs because I'm gonna run those plugs for the wiring harness right here and into the cab. And then this giant fuse box I'm gonna mount right about here. So that'll give me room to put that, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so for tonight, I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna clean up my mess. And um, for anybody else on future reference, do not buy the Vulcan wire for MIG wiring from Harbor Freight. I, uh, I bought like two rolls of it and I put it in my gun and my gun is just splattering all over the place. And I'm like, why is my weld splattering so far? I checked my, ga my gas. My gas was at around 17, 18 PSI, which is what I hear is what you should run it at. And I'm like, nothing's changed except for I put a different spool of wire on. And yeah, that, that Vulcan wire is crap. So this stuff, don't buy it. It is horrible. It's eight bucks a roll, and there's a reason why it's only eight bucks a roll, so don't do it. So anyhow, today was pretty productive. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but the cab's really not uh, like like level either. It's got to kind of got to go this a bit. So the front end's going to come down a little bit, I'm thinking. And uh, the reason why it's not sitting down far enough is because it's hitting, still hitting the Explorer cowl a little bit there. So I'm gonna have to trim that down a little bit. And like I said, I was gonna to try to cut out here where the fresh air from the, you can kind of see the fresh air intake from the uh, F1, but it's kind of sits right over top of the brain box and I don't really wanna move that mount for the brain box. So if I can just kind of cut a little bit out and notch it out and see if I can get it to work. I'm, I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not because it's just too much stuff. And then when I put the dash in here, it's gonna be really hard to like operate it anyways. I'm gonna try to figure out if I gotta put electric motor or something on to operate the fresh air intake or whatnot and so forth. The good thing is I don't have a lot to do for filler panels other than the crap that I cut out. And then I'm gonna, obviously the back panels get cut off. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. I'm going slow and steady. Um, <laughs> you wanna know about my welding? This is my welding skills. Yep, that didn't stay didn't stay at all. Thankfully it stayed on while I cut the box in half and welded it back together, which is nice, but now moving around it popped off. But still gotta finish welding the box back together and clean that up and give a nice coat of primer. And then uh, I did, it's kind of hard to see, but I got a whole box full of parts. Bought a whole bunch of stuff off of eBay and then off of like uh, Auto Metal Direct. Got a couple parts from them. I got a couple parts from I don't remember. AMD is one of the places I've been going through for a lot of stuff. It's not high quality, but it's good replacement parts, relatively cheap. And then uh, I did buy the F1 radiator support, core support. So I'm gonna get rid of this and then figure out how to mount the F1 radiator core support to the Explorer front like frame rails. Um, I did buy the inner fenders. I bought like F1 inner fenders, which probably have to cut a lot of them out to go around the suspension anyways, but I did buy new ones. Uh, I bought the header 
header panel for the lower grill. So the part where the teeth mount into on the grill. I was went for a shopping spree and you know, that's what you do when you, you don't know what to do. You just buy parts. That's kind of what I did. Anyhow, I've rambled on long enough. This is where I am for the this today. I'm gonna give it a little break, clean up my mess. It's about 10 o'clock in the evening on Monday. I'm gonna go in, grab myself some little bit of food, grab some water, get ready for bed. Clean up my mess so my wife can park her car back in here again. She'd love that. And that's it for now. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time.